Hi, I'm Olivia Dean and you're watching Learning at Home TV, which is the program that goes to air three mornings a week to support primary school students. We begin with lessons for the early years, then middle primary and finally upper primary. And all of those lessons are conducted by some wonderful teachers from across Queensland schools. First up, we'll get the kids moving, then we will be sharing a poetry performance in English looking at how we can use different strategies to solve subtraction problems in maths. And in science, we'll explore what happens to some materials when they get warmer. Good morning to all the kids out there. It is now time to get ready to learn and have some fun. Alright, who's ready to get active? Before we start our lessons, we always like to get everyone out of their chairs and get some movement happening. We need to exercise regularly to keep our bodies healthy and so that we can think clearly while we're learning. Hi, I'm Brandon Ellis from the Gold Coast Suns. I'm at home just like you. How about we get up and get active? Today I'm going to take you through an exercise which is going to be a golf swing, but how about we warm up properly first? So how about we swing our arms forward? Swing our arms back. Now let's swing our arms with a trunk rotation, bending over a bit. So what I want you to do is go and get your golf club or get an imaginary golf club. Make sure you've got a bit of room so you don't break anything. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bend our knees, we're gonna bend over, straight arms, and swing our arms in a circular motion like this. Thanks for having me. Poetry is a form of storytelling that I really enjoy. Today, Laura is going to share a poem called David's Creek. She's going to look at special tricks that poets use to make their poems more interesting and enjoyable to listen to. She's then going to share a poetry performance, and I can't wait to see that. Hi there. How are you today? My name is Laura. I really enjoy reading and listening to poetry. Have you ever read or listened to a poem? Today I'm going to read a poem called David's Creek. It's about a place I love to go and play. Maybe you have a favourite place to play. Before we read the poem, I brought along a bag of tricks to help us understand what a clever poet does. Ooh, would you like to take a look inside? This one says, repetition. Repetition is when the words or lines are repeated over and over again to add effect and help make meaning. Let's read the poem, David's Creek, and look how the author used repetition. David's Creek. There's a place I love to play where the air is cool and clean. There's a place I have to go, where the water is aquamarine. There's a place I love to sit, just under the bowing branches. There's a place I have to paddle, where the water has the answers. Just under the shiny surface, fish dart playing hide and seek. Just under the smooth brown stones, yabbies burrow around my feet. Just where I am paddling, crabs tickle at my toes. Just above my head, the cicadas drown my woes. This place I love to play, I call David's Creek. This place I have to go is always such a treat. Did you find any examples of repetition in the poem David's Creek? What words or phrases did the poet repeat over and over again. That's right. In the poem, the poet repeats the lines, there's a place I love to, and there's a place I have to, over and over again. I wonder why the poet repeats these lines. I think the lines have been repeated to help us understand the importance of David's Creek to the poet. This is a very special place for them. 
amazing work finding the repetition in the poem. Now I'm going to show you how to perform a poem. We're going to learn to use facial expressions, gestures, volume and pace to add meaning and entertain the listener. Let's look at facial expressions first. Watch how the look on my face changes as I show different emotions. You have to make sure that your facial expression matches the emotion you're wanting to express. For instance, when I smile, this expresses happiness. I wouldn't have a smile on my face if I was saying something sad like, Cinderella felt sad and cried. That wouldn't make sense. I'm gonna try a sad face this time. Cinderella felt sad and cried. That's better. My facial expression matched what I was saying. To make my performance more engaging, it's important to use gestures. These are actions used with different parts of our body. Gestures help to draw attention to certain words or ideas. I can also use gestures to take on the role of a character. What if I was pretending to be a cat? See how I use my body when I say, ears prick forward, or tail lashes ready for the hunt to show the different body parts and actions of the cat. Now I'm gonna show you how to use volume to make your performance more entertaining. Listen to how loud my voice is when I say, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And how quiet it is when I say, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Did you notice how the volume of my voice suited the character I was playing? Finally, I'm gonna show you how to use pace to engage your listener. Listen to how fast or slow I speak when I say, the backyard intruder was gone in a flash, wings flitter and flutter to a high branch, ferocious feline becomes timid tabby, once again spread out on the doormat. See how I changed the pace of my speaking to match the meaning of what I was saying. I used a faster pace to show action and then I slowed it down to show the cat was relaxing at the door. Using facial expressions, gestures, volume and pace will add meaning and make it much more fun and engaging for the listener. I'm going to now perform a poem, David's Creek. David's Creek. There's a place I love to play, where the air is cool and clean. There's a place I have to go, where the water is aquamarine. There's a place I love to sit, just under the bowing branches. There's a place I have to paddle, where the water has the answers. Just under the shiny surface, fish dart playing hide and seek. Just under the smooth brown stones, yabbies burrow around my feet. Just where I am paddling, crabs tickle at my toes. Just above my head, the cicadas drown my woes. This place I love to play, I call David's Creek. This place I have to go is always such a treat. Did you enjoy my performance? What did you think about my facial expressions, gestures, volume and pace? Did it add to your enjoyment? And did it help you understand? Today we shared a poem and looked at repetition. We also talked about how to perform a poem using facial expressions, gestures, volume and pace to add meaning and entertain the listener. Now it's your turn. Choose a poem or even a song to put on your own performance. Remember to think about facial expressions, gestures, volume and pace. You could even ask someone to watch your performance. Have a great day. Bye for now.
Our next lesson is mathematics, and today we will be thinking about subtraction. Monique will be talking about what it means to subtract and how we can use different strategies to solve subtraction problems. Let's give her our full attention. Hi everyone, my name is Monique. Today we are learning about subtraction problems and exploring some ways to solve them. When we subtract, we start with a whole amount and take a part away. The whole amount decreases or gets smaller when this part is removed. This can happen many times in our everyday lives. It has even happened to me today. Can you see over here? I had many balloons that I had blown up, but before we started, some of my balloons burst. The quantity of blown up balloons decreased. A part was removed from the whole, which means this is a real life example of a subtraction. We use many different words and phrases to talk about subtraction. Minus, take away, fewer, subtract, decrease, missing part, and how many left. These words and phrases help us to identify that we are making a whole amount smaller. Let's watch a video now of five little monkeys jumping on the bed. Watch and see how the amount of monkeys jumping on the bed gets smaller and smaller as the monkeys fall off. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Three little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Ooh, ooh. Little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. <laughs> One little monkey jumping on the bed. He fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, Put those monkeys straight to bed. Did you see how the whole amount of monkeys jumping on the bed became smaller and smaller until there were no monkeys jumping on the bed? This was subtraction in action. Let's look at some other examples where a whole amount becomes smaller. Remember, that's what happens in a subtraction problem. The whole amount becomes less. Today, we are going to use materials, images and a tense frame to help us solve our subtraction problems. Have you used some of these strategies before? Let's start with using materials as our first strategy we can use when solving a subtraction problem. Read our first problem with me, keeping your voice with mine. Nine bananas were in the bunch. Four bananas were taken away to be eaten. How many bananas are left on the bunch? In this problem, the words taken away and left help me know that I need to do some subtracting. I can see there is a whole amount of nine bananas and a part was removed. That is the four bananas that were eaten. This whole amount of bananas has decreased, so it is a subtraction problem. Let's solve this problem now with these banana counters. I will place nine banana counters here to show how many there were on the bunch. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine. Now I will take away four of the banana counters to represent the taking away of the bananas in the problem that were eaten. One, two, three, four. Now I will count how many bananas are left. Join in and do it with me. One, two, three, four, five, five. There are five banana counters. So the solution to the problem must be that there are five bananas left on the bunch. Nine subtract four leaves five. The next strategy we're going to look at is using a tens frame. Read our next problem with me. There were 14 bees buzzing around. Three bees flew away. How many bees are left? Is this a subtraction problem? Let me think. In this problem, I can see the word left and the phrase flew away, which helps me understand the problem. I can see that there is a whole amount of 14 bees. I know that a part was removed, that is the three bees that flew away. The whole amount of bees has decreased. So I am confident this is a subtraction problem. Let's solve this problem now using our tense frame and these counters to represent the bees. There are 10 spaces on a tens frame and 20 spaces on a double tens frame. As the whole amount of bees is 14, I know I will need a double tens frame to solve this problem. So I will place 14 counters on the double tens frame to represent the 14 bees in the problem. There, 14 bees on the double tens frame. Then I'll remove three counters to represent the three bees that flew away. And now three bees fly away. One, two, three. There, I can see there are still 10 counters here and one counter here. So there are 11 counters. So the solution to the problem is that there are 11 bees left. 14, take away three, leaves 11. Wow, we have learned so much about subtraction and ways you can solve subtraction problems today. We have learned that in a subtraction problem, we start with a whole amount and take away a part. The whole amount decreases or gets smaller when that part is removed. We have also learned that there are words in a subtraction problem that help us to understand that we are doing a subtraction problem. We might see words such as fewer, left and taken away. Today, we have also explored some of the different strategies which can be used to help us solve subtraction problems, including materials, images and tens frames. Thanks so much for joining me today. You might like to use some materials or do some drawings to show a subtraction problem or even make your own tens frame to help you with some subtraction solutions. Bye everyone. It's so important that we take good care of ourselves and it's also kind to take care of other people. So next, we're going to take a moment to think about people who are doing nice things in our neighbourhood and share an idea about how we can thank them. Shall we take a look? Hi, I'm Renee. This is Melissa. She's a teacher of the deaf. We're at home, just like you, thinking about all the busy people in the community, like the garbage man, the postman and the bus drivers. It makes me feel good to do activities to thank them. When I think about my family and the people in my neighbourhood, there are plenty of people doing nice things for others. I'm very grateful to be a part of my community. Let's try starting a thank you movement in our neighbourhoods. This session will be based on us 
all noticing all the many kind people in our communities and the things that they do to help others. There are lots of ways that we can say thank you. First, we could make a poster to the postie or any other person that delivers packages to your house. You can draw on a picture and you can display it on your letterbox or gate. Here's a poster that I made for our postie. Thank you, Mr. Postman. Have a good day. You can write thank you notes for your neighbours and deliver them to their letterbox on their daily walk in the street. You can even write thank you notes to your own family. You can leave them in the bathroom on the mirror, under their pillow or even on their favourite chair. I got this one this morning. Thanks for all the hugs. Starting a thank you movement encourages everybody to feel happier and can help you stay connected with others. That's all for now. See you next time. ice cream that has melted before you finished eating it and began dripping all down your arm and all over your hand? I wonder what makes it change from being a hard ice cream into a soft runny mess. That is what David is investigating today in science. Hi. This piece of ice has been in the freezer where it's very cold. What do you think will happen if I just leave it here on the bench? We'll check the ice in a few minutes. Today we're exploring what happens to some materials when they get warmer. Now, have a close look at the material on the side of my candle holder. It looks like drops of water or milk have been running down the side, but it's actually quite hard. I can break it off. When I light the candle, look closely and see what happens. Now, I don't want you to use candles or matches at home. Only adults should use them because they can burn your skin or cause bigger fires. When we carefully observe changes in materials, we're working like a scientist. So. Now, the solid material that the candle's made of is called wax. Under the flame, now that it's burning, I can see a little pool of clear material that looks like water. It's a liquid. But it's actually still wax. I can tell that. I don't know if there's enough left there to run down, but you can see it's been running down the side just like a liquid. But when it comes down, it goes hard when it cools down. It's been a solid, then it became a liquid. The next material we'll look at is butter. Have a little bit here. Now, have you ever noticed what happens when you put butter or margarine on hot toast? I don't have any hot toast here, but I do have this heat gun. It's like a hairdryer. And we're going to heat the butter the same way that toast does. What do you predict will happen when I heat the butter. Let's have a look. I can see it's going smooth and it's looking a bit liquidy. And now it's starting to change shape. Then I can see bubbles. It's getting really hot. It's changed colour a little bit. And it's turning into a blob of liquid. Do you think it's still butter? It's changed from a solid into a liquid when we heated it. We call that melting. It still smells exactly like butter. We're going to try warming one more material. I've got some crayons. Can you 
predict what will happen when I heat some of it up. I've got some little pieces here. Let's see. Oops, the little pieces are blowing away. Not as quick as the butter, but I can see the little pieces starting to go shiny and turn into liquid. Now I can see them changing shape. Ah, now it's starting to run into different places. We'll just leave that there. We're going to take up some ice. We've got a big chunk of ice here. Once this is a little bit more liquid, I'm going to try pouring the liquid crayon onto this chunk of ice and see what happens. All right, I think we're nearly ready. You can see the colours starting to mix together a bit too. All right, I think that's liquid enough. I'm using this silicon mat so I don't burn my hands. All right, I'll pour that onto the ice. Looks liquidy, it's still a bit liquid. We'll give that a little while. What do you think's happening? We'll touch it with this. Yep. Now I've got a chunk of crayon. Let's see if I can still write with it. Oh, still a bit soft, but it's still crayon. So we changed the crayon from solid to liquid and then back to solid again. Time to check our block of ice again. Do you see any change? So, there's, there was water in the bowl. So just by sitting on the desk in this room, now that the ice was not in the freezer anymore, it melted and became water. But did you know that ice is also water? It's just a solid form of water when it's very cold. When it warms up, it becomes liquid water. Time to look back at what we've learnt today. We now know, first, that some solid materials change to liquid when they're heated. Some liquid materials change back to solid when they cool. And um, the third thing is, when we make predictions and careful observations about changes, we're working like a scientist. Now, heat guns and matches aren't really safe for you to use, but you could try melting some materials by putting them out in the hot sun and cooling them in the fridge or the freezer. Can you find any other materials that change when they warm up or cool down? Make some careful observations as materials change from solid to liquid, or liquid back to solid. I wonder what you'll find out. Have fun. Alright guys, I'm going to call it. It's time for a brain break. It's our chance to get up and have a stretch and hear about someone's favourite sport. I think this one will be familiar to many of you because it's played in school grounds right across Queensland. And after that, Luke will join the middle primary kids, so bye for now. Hi, I'm Jason. Hi, I'm Riley and I'm in Year 5. Nice to meet you, Riley. Riley, what's one of your favourite physical activities or sports at the moment? Handball. Handball. I love handball. I played a lot of handball when I was at school. still play it now as a PE teacher. Mate, um, what are some uh, good moves we might be able to do when we play handball? What do you think we might start with today? A forward shot. Forward shot. So jump off the couch. Let's have a go as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to step forward and we're going to hit that ball. Yep. Yep, that's it. And again, other side. That's it. Try both hands. You need to use both hands in handball. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Now, what's another good shot we could try in handball? Maybe through the legs? Through the legs. Well, I like that one. Okay, so let's go behind through the legs. Let's go. Oh, other side again. 
Yeah, good one. One more. Well done. Okay, last one. Sometimes you really have to reach and dive to play handball as well, don't you? Yeah. So let's go out to the side. Let's go to the left first. Let's go. Hit one out the side. Oh, and again out the side. Good one. One more. Excellent, excellent. Riley, thank you very much for showing us some of those handball moves today. Hope you had fun at home. See you next time.